Today we have with us a Mercedes B-Class, the family hatchback from Mercedes. And to be specific, this is the B180 with the diesel engine. That's right, this is a CDI. Now the B-Class in general is a taller, wider and longer version of the Mercedes A-Class. And so in a way, you can call the A-Class as the hot hatch from Mercedes and the B-Class the family hatchback. So if you're the type of a person who wants a luxurious family hatchback, which is a lot practical, well, the B-Class is the car that you're looking for. And in comparison, the A-Class would be for a person who is more inclined towards the driving portion because, well, it is smaller and it also has less weight. But at the same time, you have a family and you want a little bit of practicality from a hatchback, well, then the A-Class is the car for you. And by the way, we have done a review of the Mercedes A-Class on this very channel and you can find a link to that in the description down below. But anyways, in this video, we're just going to be focusing on the B-Class, talking about its styling, the features, the practicality and the comfort of this car and last but not the least, the driving experience of this car as well. So be sure to watch this video till the complete end and without any further ado, let's get started. Now starting off with this review, I'm not gonna lie, this car is very simple. It's not flashy nor is it very sporty. It is just the family hatchback that I told you in the starting. But if you talk about some styling cues of this car, we're going to start off with the headlamp in this car. We have the bi-xenon projector headlamp set up in this car from Mercedes and we also have DRLs in this car, which have this curvaceous look over here. But the big part over here is that the DRLs in this car do not act as the indicators. For the indicators, you actually have a separate LED strip over here and that acts as the indicator and not the DRLs. But that's quite simple. Down below, we have the fog lamps or the standing lamps in this car over here. And other than that, it's very simple. The bonnet is short. We have the Mercedes logo over here and a bigger one over here, just like in any other Mercedes. And just like in any other normal Mercedes, you get the old style grille in this car, which has two slats on this side, two slats on the other side with a chrome garnish. Now coming to the side profile of the B-Class, you quickly realize that this car is very tall. Uh, just to give you guys a comparison, I'm pretty tall at 6 feet 1 and when I stand next to this car, it comes to my shoulder line, which according to a hatchback is very tall. I mean, you understand that in an SUV, but a hatchback, you guys can see. Now coming to the alloy wheels, uh, we have a 16 inch 5 spoke uh, diamond cut design. It looks very nice and by far the most classiest thing in the Mercedes B-Class. The ORVM design, just like any other Mercedes, it's actually pretty much the same. We have the indicator indicators which divide into two when you come onto the side. And on the front side, you have a squarical rectangular design over here. And other than that, uh, two things that I like in this car are the lines. You can see one line over here and the other one is actually rotating upwards towards the side over here. Once again, it's a simple design. Over here, we're going to start off with the tail lamps and the tail lamps in this car, out of that, I didn't really don't know why Mercedes did that, but the brake light in this car, only that is halogen. Other than that, everything else is LED, the indicators, the reverse light. And when you turn on the DRLs or the headlights in this car, the brake light that turns on, that is also LED. But when you press the brake in that car, the light that turns on at that time, that is halogen. I don't know why they did that, but that's just the Mercedes way of doing it. Uh, talking about badging, we have the B180 badging over here, obviously the Mercedes logo front and clear in the center of the car and over on that side we have the CDI badging telling us that this has a diesel engine. Now a few more things that I like in this car is first of all they have a rear wiper which is essential in a hatchback then we also have chrome garnishes everywhere such as below the Mercedes logo you can see this chrome garnish over here the scuff plate in this car that is also finished in chrome the bumper lines over here also finished in chrome and that gives a very good look to the Mercedes B-Class. The interior of the B-Class I'm not gonna lie is very nice especially the materials used in this car. Everything is a very sturdy. You can see the center console doesn't rattle around here and there. Everything is either leather. It's yes, there is a use of plastic in this car, but then it's one of the entry level models of Mercedes. So that is expected from this car. Other than that, I really like everything, how everything just fits in. These uh, air vents, how they are integrated within the dashboard, this uh, radio console area, the AC vents, everything has been integrated so very well. We have this display, although it is small, it's okay. I can live with that. Uh, we have a very nice steering wheel in this car, completely leather finished. So yeah, the interior is 
nice and really this interior anyone can live with and so that was the styling of the mercedes b180 like i said it's a very simple styling and it's according to a family hatchback so on that if i were to give this a car a rating from 1 to 5 it would be a 3 because even though it's a family sedan you sometimes want the car to be a little flashy and mercedes has made it a little too simple so a 3 on 5 for the styling from my side now if you're liking this video so far i would encourage you to smash that like button and give this channel a red subscribe push because it is our pledge to provide our viewers with the correct and the most descriptive automobile reviews not only for cars but now starting with bikes as well so once again if you're liking this video smash that like button and give this channel a red subscribe button push and with that said let's move on with the video starting with the features in this car we are inside the car and we're going to start with the steering wheel of this car as you can see it's a leather wrapped steering wheel as i told you in the styling portion as well it's a multi functioning one and that's very good we have these buttons for controlling this display which we will be talking about in a minute then we have these buttons for this display uh, we also have paddle shifters in this car that is very nice in case you wanted to do some spirited driving in your b class that is possible we have stocks over on this side this is your wiper stock we have our cruise control stock in this car obviously we get cruise control in this car which is a nice feature and then by far the best thing we have this stock over here which is actually the gear selector i've always liked this about mercedes that the gear selector is always positioned on the steering column that way if especially you are parking the car you do not need to mess around with the center console area you know changing gears you can easily just do it from here like drive reverse drive reverse it's very very simple so i really really like that and now coming to this display as you can see it's a very very standard display there is no kind of animations in this display or any kind of graphics over here it's a very standard one which just provides you with the information so for example let's go into trip first and we have the trip odometer of this car uh, very standard we then also have the range of this car and the fuel consumption of this car right now the car is idling that's why it's showing so much uh, but um when you start driving the car it provides you real time information over here and then we go uh, more down you have the economy display in this car for example it tells us how much acceleration uh, we have how much uh, the car has been idling for and how much the coasting of this car has been for then from the start it tells us that the car has been started for 20 minutes what the average fuel economy of this car is what the average time is very very standard things then we go into audio which tells us the bluetooth audio right now no device is connected so it's showing us that if we were to turn on the fm it would have shown us the fm uh, information then going forward we have the telephone once again it is telling us to connect our telephone from bluetooth so then we have our assist so this is very standard we have our status overview uh, we have the electronic stability program of this car and then we have attention assist always a great feature from mercedes when you're driving for a long time the car keeps on telling you uh, after a short while to you know take some breaks so that you do not fell, uh, for, fall asleep on the seat of this car very nice feature attention assist then we have the service view which tells us that there is no messages as of now messages means that there is no a type of alert in this car there is uh, tire pressure if you want to check it from there and then we have assist plus which is very standard feature of mercedes then we have uh, settings in which we can uh, change the brightness and uh, lighting information of this car so very very standard things in this car over here then we have our gear selector over here so in all it's quite informative um, and it gets the job done very very well Then over on this side you also have another display but I have done a very detailed review of this display in the Mercedes A class that I have reviewed on this channel. Once again you can find a link to that in the description down below. Go check that out if you want a detailed review of this display because uh, it's essentially the same display that you've got in the A class and in the B class as well. So uh, go check that video out if you want to look at the infotainment display in the car. Other than that we have our radio controls over here very standard and then we also have a one zone climate control over here. it is not automatic so you have to change it uh, manually over here so that's something you need to keep in mind over on this side we have a few more things such as the mode you're driving in we have economy that is e we have sport mode for well sport mode and then we have m which is manual mode so when you put put uh, m in this car you have to use the paddle shifters in this car then we have economy mode for the best fuel economy in this car and then we have our uh, parking emergency light in case you have some problem in the car 
Now time for the practicality in the Mercedes B class, which is the biggest selling point for the Mercedes B class. We're going to start with the glove box. Once you open it, as you can see, it's actually a very large glove box, one of the largest that I've seen in many cars. You can easily keep a lot of stuff over here without any problem. But also we have another part over here, essentially for keeping like your owner's manual over here and keeping some uh, other things like segregated from the normal glove box in this car. So I really like the glove box. It's pretty large and it's off to a good start when you talk about practicality in the B180. Now moving to the center console in this car is essentially a really large one and we're going to start off with the first one which is the ashtray in this car. So you can throw off the cigarette ashes over here, you have a 12 volt charging socket over here which can also be used as a cigarette lighter if you have one. Next off we have a big one over here as you can see it's pretty large I can essentially keep my whole hand in there so you can keep a lot of stuff over here like something to eat or something like that over there but then you have two cup holders as well which is one of them is pretty deep the other one is not but they have the same sizes so you can easily keep like bottles over here as well and I really like that. Last but not the least we have an armrest which is uh, adjustable as you can see. And uh, but there is one thing that when you adjust it to its fully extended position, it does cover up one of your cup holders. But anyways, once you open it up, as you can see, it reveals a very, very large storage cubby. Easily able to keep a lot of stuff over here. You don't really need to care for storage cubbies in the B class. You have a uh, USB port over there as well, so that you can connect your phone or something or charge your phone up through there. Now coming to the door pockets in this car, once again, it's pretty large over here. You can keep easily like a bottle and they've even made this slanting thing so that the bottle can rest over here. You have another storage cubby over there so you can keep a lot of stuff that side as well. But then on the driver's side, I really like one thing that they've given this kind of a pocket over on this side as well next to the driver. So if the driver has something that he wants to kind of hide as well because no one really looks over there. So you can keep some stuff over on this side as well. Now coming to the rear doors in this car, it's a very large storage cubby but it's very thin so I don't think you can keep a bottle over here but then again newspapers, magazines, not a big problem. Now the main situation when you come to the B class is that you don't have seat pockets which is like the essential thing in almost every car, you don't have a seat pocket over here nor over there. That's something weird. Uh, and the center console, I'm pretty happy with. You have a storage cubby over here for like keeping your phones over here. Then you can open this as well. You have another storage cubby for keeping like coins over here. Then you have a 12 volt charging socket over here. And then once you close that up, coming to the armrest in this car, you can pull this open like so. And then you have two cup holders which open up like so. Now coming to the most important part of our practicality session which has to do with the trunk of this car. First off, we're going to talk about opening this trunk and sadly there's only one way to do it and that is the request sensor given underneath the trunk. There is no button inside the cabin of this car, there's no button on the key fob of this car, it's just the request sensor. So opening this trunk, I'm not a big fan of that but once you do open this car's trunk, the space inside, that I'm a big fan of. So the trunk of this car, it is very large without a problem and especially being a hatchback according to that you can keep a lot of stuff here without a problem. Going for a long road trip in this car, that is going to be a no big problem. Now talking about organization, we have one hook on this side, we have another hook on this side for keeping things tied up. We also have a light in this uh, trunk so that's a big plus point but then for organization we also have this cargo tray in this car which can be pulled in like that. So this gives us two advantages. First off, where you can keep a little bit of light things over here because it's not that sturdy, it is made of like plasticky cloth so that's why you can keep some light things on it. But then when you close this trunk over here, the people are not able to see what is kept inside the trunk because of this cargo tray. So that is a big plus point of this car. But another thing in this car that I really like is that let's just get this out of the way first and then this door over here. So as you can see when I do that, it opens this out and then I can push this out of the way and it gives me way to access the rear seats. Now, because of this, I can keep something very long in this trunk, like, you know, pipes, if you're transporting some pipes or something, or say skis in this car, you can easily keep them through over here and it gives you a pathway to keep some long stuff in the Mercedes B-Class as well. Now, starting off with the comfort in the Mercedes B180, well, first of all, the seat material. It's very plush, leather seats, so that's amazing. Um, I am gripped into my seat very well. I don't think I'll be moving around here and there a lot. Um, 
so in that scenario it's nice um, especially being the front seat i can move the seat back and forth obviously this is a mercedes car so the controls are given on the door but one thing these controls are electronic for only the driver side seat if you move on to the passenger you actually have manual controls over there the lumbar electro the lumbar support is electronic but moving the seat back and forth the height and the backrest back and forth that is manual on the passenger side seat it's electronic only for the driver in this car but another good thing about the driver that i think is that you also have uh, three seat memories for the driver so that is very nice as well um talking uh, talking about other things we also have uh, the headrest which is adjustable not only up and down but back and forth as well that's manual so you need to keep in mind and not only for the driver for the passenger as well you can adjust the headrest of this car as well now for the driver other things in this car that i really like is for example you have this you can move it back and forth up and down so that is really really nice as well the driver doesn't have any kind of uncomfort in the mercedes b class so uh, overall it's a pretty comfortable car in the front seat but that's the situation of every other car the front seats are always very comfortable but the rear seats that's where the story changes for a lot of the cars now let's see how the comfort is in the rear seat in the b180 now coming to the rear seats in this car you just saw that i was sitting in the front seats and i'm pretty tall 6 feet 1 and i've adjusted the driver side seat according to how i would sit so if i come back over here you can see i easily have about 4 4 and a half inches of uh, leg room with me which is absolutely massive like i said the b class is pretty long as well so that helps in the leg room and the trunk space as well as you saw in the practicality session now the headroom like i said the car is tall so does that help and definitely it does i have about 4 4 and a half inches of headroom as well and considering the fact that i'm 6 feet 1 it's amazing if anyone with even a turban is sitting back here he won't have a problem sitting in this rear seat and talking about the seat material obviously the leather seats that we have in the front they're the same in the rear as well very comfortable very plush yes a little bit of under thigh support is less in this car but that is not that big a deal because i can stretch my legs and then you can see that i can easily have a lot of under thigh support in this car as well so overall it's very spacious uh, space wise i don't have any problem moving to the middle seat in this car um i do have to keep one leg on this side and the other on that side but the transmission tunnel in this car it's actually pretty large so i don't have a problem keeping my foot on it as well but then uh, the under thigh support is very very lacking but if i keep something like this i can sit pretty comfortably even in the middle seat of this car overall comfort wise i don't think it's a big problem but when we move on into the driving portion of this car then we'll have to see how the comfort is while driving the car Okay, driving the Mercedes B class. Uh, initial impressions: I am on a highway road, so there are not a lot of bumps. But then again, if uh, there are a few discrepancies in the road, the suspension is doing a really good job in absorbing them. Then again, I am driving in economy mode, which is like the comfort mode of this car. So that is why I really don't feel that there is a big problem while driving this car. Uh, the suspension and the seats are doing a very good job of absorbing all the bumps. car but if we move on into sport mode instantaneously the revs of this car go a little bit high uh, gear down so that it's on its toes so that's very nice and if i want to go for it i just press it down completely the press the gas pedal down completely it takes about 2 seconds to register it even in sport mode because it's a family car you know uh, the car is not like a um, amg or something that uh, it knows that you want to go for a lot of spirited driving even in sport mode it does take about 1 2 seconds to gear down and then go uh, but it's okay and talking about the acceleration it's not like brutally fast that my head goes back or something it's okay i expect when it uh, is going to go and i'm okay with the driving experience for taking like uh, overtakes in this car you can easily do that without the, without a problem this car but if you wanted the car to respond however you want well obviously you can move on to manual mode and then you have the paddle shifters in this car to do it like right now i'm going into first gear because it's very very slow and i'm about to make a u turn uh, and talking about u turn the visibility in this car is also very nice the b pillars the a pillars everything is of very decent size um the orvms the irvms very good size i can see around the car easily then again i'm in manual mode all i need to do is press down again change the gear and uh, yes if you're driving on the highway and you wanted to like 
make a uh, you uh, overtake really really fast just gear down with the paddle shifters and then go for it the car really goes out um, uh, using that 2.2 liter engine that this car has and even in sport mode if i uh, uh, let's move back to sport mode for a second even in this sport mode the car is very comfortable it's not like the uh, the suspension is like brutally uh, uh, hard right now it's it's absolutely fine uh, yes when i do move on to sport mode like i said the uh, uh, revs do climb up a little bit i do feel that the steering wheel is a little bit more harder which is nice when you want to go for a spirited drive overall i don't really think that there's a problem while driving the car um i can really just cruise in this car without any problem and if you know i wanted to go for a uh, leisure ride in this car just pop this car into a uh, cruise control with the cruise stick that this car has and i don't even need to do anything all i just need to do is just wait and brake accordingly to the traffic which i think is a very nice luxurious feature talking about the cabin noise or rattles in this car well there are no rattles even if i go over a bumpy road the car is very very stable at that time i don't feel any unnecessary noises at any point um the road noise yes i can hear it a little bit but not too much that it tries to irritate me or something when someone blows the horn i can easily make that out like for example there was a horn on the previous road i don't know if the camera picked it up but i could easily clearly hear it so that's really nice Uh, once again i'm repeating myself again and again it's a wonderful car just to drive then again if you want to go for a spirited drive it's not for that because that for that it's the mercedes a class and not the b class the b class is for the family and for a comfortable ride which this car is capable of providing and so that was the garage reviews review of the mercedes b class once again the car is very very nice when we talk about a family hatchback it's very spacious it's very practical and overall a nice car if you're in the market for a luxury hatchback like i said in the start as well so that was our review if you like this video please smash that like button comment down below what your favorite part about this car is share this video as much as you can and a subscribe to this channel would be really really nice because it gives us motivation to provide you with more such content thank you for watching this video and i'll see you in the next one